This is a replay back to you, Chops Patrick. With the two Japanese eyes in you. Now, Patrick. They mentioned my name there again in the tape. Patrick, I wouldn't need any army for you. And you quite know well that. Because I'm a one-man man, Patrick. Don't forget that. And what damage I do to you, Patrick... Beyond describable, that you'll have to go into a B and B in Munningau with the damage that I do to you. Now, Patrick, my advice to you to keep my name out of your mouth. It's like the day, Patrick, I just heard it here before minutes ago, you got me a bowsy. And Patrick, I'm far from a bowsy, Patrick, because I buy you and I sell you, Patrick. And that's 100% for certain in that. You've nothing. Only an old mortgage, county council house. That's that, Patrick. You carried on ridiculous, Patrick, coming back from Indigoia, Patrick. In the house next door was took back off your son, Joe. I leave it at that, Patrick, till you get back to me. I go no further. I won't tell no more stories at the moment. I'll wait for you to reply back to me about it. Now, Patrick, your two sons and yourself the three bowsies and good for nothing. And every time, Patrick, that you look in the mirror to shave, you will think of the man that can view brain damage. And every time that you look up your son Barney, you will remember Mike Christie made the same shows of your son Barney what the man done to you years and years ago. That was your fighting man, Patrick. That you were blacking him on money and girl talking about for years and years. And Patrick, as I said, I had two surgeries last year. One on me back, one on me neck. I was nearly killed in a car crash. Oh, Patrick, before you come back and say, well, I wouldn't have been killed. But I wasn't killed, thank God for it. When God wants me, he'll take me. So, Patrick, you're barking up the wrong tree when you're bringing my name into that type of business. Because you should know, Patrick. I know I'm in, Patrick, that you don't know. And you wouldn't like to know that. So if you want to go down that road with Mike's Christie, you remember these words I'm saying to you. And think of this very clearly. Your son Joe will end up with your house. Put like that there. When you die out of sort, your son Joe will end up with it. I hope you understand what I mean by that. Now, Patrick, I made a show of you today and your son Barney. Barney wouldn't come in by a 12 by 12 with me. I accepted you for one hour after, Patrick. To come in by a uh, 12 by 12 with me. You wouldn't come in. I took your son's plaid, Patrick, and I have his plaid in my pocket because he skipped around for six and a half minutes, moaning like a cow of shit that he is. Patrick, I'm 12 stone weight. The proof is up there, all over the internet. And he's 11 and a half stone. 12 stone weight, 6 foot 3 in height, big war born by, 12 and 13 year box in the top. He's a useless man that I ever came across in my life. He's 21 years of age, come on, Patrick, and he's good for nothing. You said he's a gossip, Patrick. Well, Patrick, one time ago I was an old gossip too. When I was 19 years of age, Patrick, you brought me back from Kilbegan when I was drunk. You were sober in your house, Patrick, in Nashville. You gave me a fast box, Patrick. I drew the hand I gave it back to you. As I was walking out through the door, Patrick, you gave me a slow off a hover bow in the back of the head. And you knocked me. And that's when you bit me with the bow in. It was very easy to do that, Patrick. So no excuse for your son at any age that he is. You were a tramp, Patrick, all your life. 
and your two sons followed you for that. You're a Beguicho, you're a jealous man. You never had nothing, as I told you, County Council mortgage. You carried on that bad last year when the house is took back off your son Joe. You Beguich, Chap Shui Chu, Chap's house when he bought that house of Thomas. You begwitched it because you're after that house for your son Barney, but you never got it and you never will get it. But I can tell you a better one, Patrick. Do you know if you keep out, Patrick? I'll show you who the boss is. If I ever put up enough for dash, you might sell me that whole house. And then I'll end up with Chap's house. And you won't like that, Patrick. But Patrick, if you go back and look at yourself for Bowsy, your two sons, some of your son-in-laws, alcoholics, drunkies, and hands out the windows. And they're not bowsies and tramps. So Patrick, you're the last in the world you can call anybody a bowsie. It's like years ago you told Chop Shoey. All you got for your daughter was an alcoholic and a bowsie. And you're getting a young one for your son, which she's a plastic shirt. But Chop Shoey proved you wrong. Who was the one that got them? It wasn't Huey. It was you that got them. So calm as a bitch, Patrick. No, oh, Patrick. This is going to be my last reply to you. And I hope you understand, Patrick, who you're dealing with. Because you're backing up the wrong tree here. And I can promise you that. And that's a guarantee for 100% of a fact. So now, Patrick, I'm your son Barney's boss. You refused to go in a trail by trail with me today. I was giving you an option to come in afterwards. So you refused that. Now, Patrick, as true as my mother, Winnie, is in Bala McCormick graveyard, that I may die with cancer the same thing that my mother got. And I would never swear on cancer in my life. And that my wife, Han, I can put in a Bible that I begged your son Barney five or six different occasions in front of them Jesus. I jumped back over the gate and I begged him to come in and he wouldn't come back in a fight to finish his fight. And that's as true as my mother is in Bala McCormick graveyard and I would not swear no lies in that. As the Jesus told me today, they were showing fair play and they don't want to get involved in nothing. But that did happen. So I'm your son's boss, and every time that you look at your son, you will remember Mike's Christie the same way that you remember the man that gave you brain damage. But I didn't give it. I didn't get a chance to give Barney yet, because Barney went, when and when and when. Ever how bad you were through the years, you held for a few hour stops, but Barney didn't hold for a few stops. So don't be using the agents for an excuse, Patrick, as you said. Don't be eating your own words. I give you my terms and conditions so today they weren't accepted. And I still went out with the injuries that I have. And I was willing to go back out there again today. But now, Patrick, this is my last reply back to you. But I can promise you, Patrick, I have a son coming in a couple of years from now. And the kittles... The tables will turn in a couple of years from now. So, Patrick, you keep my name out of your mouth if you know what is good for you. And that's no threat now, Patrick. So don't take that as a threat. If you know what's good for you, you keep my name out of your mouth. Or I will give you something, Patrick, that you won't like. And you'll have to leave money down. Because I have something here, Patrick, on my phone that you won't like, Patrick. And that's a promise from the bottom of my heart. And once I send it out, Patrick, you'll have to go on an hour morning now for the rest of your life. Now, Patrick, pull my bluff, Patrick, and I'll send it out in the tapes in five minutes from now. And that's a guarantee.
For fact, you just go pull my bluff. I guarantee you, Patrick, you won't like what I have. So go now, get out with your life, and shove your nose up my arse between you and Barney, and I will deal with Barney, and that's no doubt about that. Can one, but he can't hide. Trust me in that, and I will deal with him. <laughs>